Hello and welcome. I am Kamar Sandhu. On the long pending and lingering issue of disability pension and benefits for undertraining defence personnel, including Agnivis, I spoke to Mr. Ankur Chaturvedi in Kolkata on a video call. He was himself voted out in 1996 while in the sixth term of the National Defence Academy, that is NDA at Kadakwasla, due to an injury. He has been working tirelessly on this particular issue and has met with some success. Welcome, Mr. Chaturvedi. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much for calling me. On the issue of disability for officers uh, while they are under training, what exactly have you been seeking, Mr. Chaturvedi? Uh, sir, what I have been seeking for the last 20 plus years is the ex-servicemen mm. status for medically voted out cadets. Okay. Now, uh, the issue is that a Jawan who's under mm. training, a CAPF officer who's under training, mm -hmm. if they get disabled during training, right. they are given a disability pension and full ex-servicemen status. Okay. Now, cadets also were given disability pension till 1996. Okay. In 1996, the then government created mm. a policy and mm. some wise guy created a term called monthly ex gratia. Okay. So, the cadets started getting this monthly disability pension under mm. the name of monthly ex gratia. Okay. Now, because it is not called disability pension, Ji. the cadets have been denied the benefits of ex-servicemen. Okay. Now, my my request or my submission is that just change the name. And this is not what I say. In 2015, mm. the committee of expert headed by General Sabarwal, mm. that also gave the same suggestion that change okay. the name. Okay. This proposal, this proposal went to the three Jags. Everyone says, just do it. Mm. But it just is not happening, unfortunately. So, is it only uh, a change of name that you are seeking or is there more to it? Sir, the change of name solves the problem. Imagine a person who becomes a quadriplegic while training. Right. He is not even given medical treatment today because he is not an ESM, ex-serviceman. Oh, oh, okay. Now, if so, the, the, so, they if don't the, get ex-serviceman benefits, right? Yeah, none of the benefits. Now, sir, uh, a person, disabilities in uh, training are not always very severe. A person mm. may be fit for employment in civil. Right. A person who spent, uh, there are people who join NDA and get boarded out in IMA in their final term. So, they've less, right. le lost four years of life. That's right. For them to get ingrained into the normal civil structure where their peers are four years ahead of them. Mm. The bare mm. minimum that the government can do is give them ex-servicemen status. So, Mr. Chaturvedi, I believe you attended a high-powered meeting which was also attended by the Raksha Mantri in March 2024. What exactly was on the agenda and what was decided in that meeting? Uh, thank you for bringing this up, sir. Uh, the meeting was called by the Raksha Mantri and I am very grateful for him for taking this issue up. Mm. And uh, in the meeting, I presented why cadets need to be given disability pension. What is the legal basis for it? What is the moral basis for it? Okay. Uh, the meeting was attended by the defense secretary, the secretary DSW, uh, mm. Jan Chauhan, the CDS. And uh, we had deliberations on what uh, is the legal position, why this needs to be done. But mm. the great thing was all the, all the senior officers present Mm. agreed that even though legally it just it sounds right mm. even though it sounds right it, we don't need to even discuss the legal position it's a okay. welfare measure a very mm. small mm. number of people are involved a very small right. financial outlay is there and it's a welfare measure which should be right. done mm. Mm. and everyone agreed and the Raksha Mantri gave a directive that it should be implemented immediately so, has that uh, the directive been followed? I mean, uh, is the is the proposal through? Uh, sir, the proposal, what I gather from my sources is that the DSW has made the proposal and sent it for uh, financial approval. Okay. And, uh, it is in financial approval. 
Oh, I see. So, how many uh, officers would benefit? What is the total number of people uh, who have been disabled over the years uh, while they were uh, under training as officers? Sir, from 1985 uh, till now, we would have about uh, 450 such disabled cadets. Okay. And this would include the OTS and other uh, academies also? All, all training academies of all three armed forces. Incidentally, sir, uh, Coast Guard under trainee officer. Mm. Coast Guard also, as you know, is an armed force. Right. Uh, uh, they already get disability pension. So, isn't that a little surprising that uh, the Coast Guard uh, under training officers were getting it and uh, people from the Army or the armed forces were not getting it? Sir, I'll, I'll, I'll make it more absurd. Uh. Let's say let's say there is a there is a ladder which the cadets have to climb. Now right. coast guards were also trained in the naval mm. academy. Okay. The coast guard officers. So let's say that two cadets are climbing the ladder ladder. Mm. One is a coast guard under trainee or under trainee coast guard officer, the other is a naval officer. Right. And they both are climbing a naval cadet. I'm sorry, not an officer, a naval cadet. And they're mm. climbing up the ladder and the ladder snaps. And both of right. them fall down, both of them injure their spine. The Coast Guard guy will get disability pension, mm. but the Naval Cadet will not. How do you want something more absurd, sir? Yeah, yes, tell us because this is absolutely absurd. Bizarre. We've had, we've had quadriplegics who are not mm. even given medical treatment. They're not covered mm. since they're not ESM. They're not mm. given ECHS benefits. Okay. And once you are boarded out, you are not even given treatment in an MH. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. This needs to be corrected. Now, tell me, what is the position on the Jawans? You made a mention that the Jawans, uh, 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 if they are injured uh, while they are under training as recruits, they get disability pension and uh, also ex-servicemen benefits. Is that right? Yes. Uh, in 2006, the government came out with a circular which granted ex-servicemen status to recruits. So, if a recruit okay. gets disabled during okay. training and boarded out, he gets all the disability benefits of a Jawan. So, basically the okay. post that he was training okay. for. So, he would get all the benefits that a Sapoy would get uh, on retirement. Absolutely. There is no distinction between a disabled Jawan boarded mm. out on medical ground and a disabled recruit being boarded out on medical grounds. Now, I want to uh, touch upon the Agnipath scheme, which was cleared by the government in June 2022 and introduced from January 2023 onwards. That's when the, the training started. Now, the training of the Agnivirs uh, has been truncated to six months instead of the normal training of nine months for the Jawans. It appears that a lot of uh, Agnivirs who are under training uh, have been getting injured possibly because of the truncated uh, training and uh, they just asked to go home with no benefits whatsoever. Is that fair? Absolutely not fair, sir. And I'll, I'll just digress a bit and make a point, sir. Okay. Sir, a soldier, a soldier when he's trained, whether it be an officer, a Jawan, an Agnivir or whatever, mm. he cannot be trained on video games. You're training men to face battle. Mm. Mm. Today is the Kargil Vijay Divas, sir. Mm. The Kargil victory is taught across militaries in the world as an impossible victory. Right. It happened because of our men, sir. The training that they went through and they Absolutely. proved their mettle in war. And right. sir, this cannot happen without them trained in risky scenarios. Right. You cannot right. make soldiers making playing video <laughs> games. So right. a military training would entail a certain amount of physical risk which will lead to physical injuries and at some unfortunate cases, disablement. But then now, how is this uh, happening? Uh, uh, you know, I'm actually surprised myself. Sir, that's, that they're that's not getting the any point. benefits. That's the whole point. I'm, I'm really surprised because uh, once I once you told me and I found out that they're not getting anything. I just looked mm. out, uh, looked up uh, the Indian Army website or joined mm. the Indian Army. And it says entitlement of Agnivirs, mm. one time ex gratia of 44, 25, 15 lakh based on mm. percentage of disability 
175-50 from mm-hmm. public fund to full pay of the unserved period up to four years with the date mm-hmm. of disability, including okay. save and component from public fund. Now, these are okay. the entitlements which the scheme itself on the website of the Indian or I'm no expert, I'm no legal expert, but this is what is given on the website. Now, if I put this with my experience of cadets, cadets mm-hmm. have been entitled to monthly ex gratia if they get medically boarded out from right. 1996. Uh, the circular came out in 96 and they are entitled to this since 1986. That's right. There have been at least 50 plus cases. Mm. where I have had to intervene, where I contacted the individual who was boarded out and they were getting nothing. They had to Mm -hmm. uh, take up the matter. Mm -hmm. Now, the Mm -hmm. problem that we have is that when most of the people who sit on the chair, they consider themselves custodian of the public exchequer. They do not see that we are a welfare state. If a person is disabled or if someone who's lost or uh, who's lost opportunity, he needs to be compensated and looked after. And as mm. a nation, it's a duty. If you ask any taxpayer whether he would want his tax money to go to, to, towards that, he'll say most definitely. But still, the people there are not sensitive. This lack of sensitivity is so what creates mean, the problem. Does it mean, Mr. Chaturvedi, that possibly in the regimental training centers, the officers who are dealing with the aspect uh, have not read uh, what you have actually read out to me? Uh, possible, sir. Very possible. And I don't blame the officers because the focus of the officer is to train a soldier for war. Mm-hmm. This is an incidental thing. It's a welfare measure. I'm not saying they should not use it. But I'm just saying that in the priority of things, it says stay somewhere low. And Mr. Uh, Chaturvedi, it again, appears... It appears that uh, in the first two uh, batches of Agni Veers, over 100, possibly 150 people were sent home because of injuries that they suffered while uh, under training. Uh, uh, most of them have come home. Uh, they say they, have, they are getting no benefit. So what should they do? Sir, I would say that the first thing is to make a representation and get this benefits which the government has already declared that they need to give. Okay. And that, that should be the first step. The okay. second step is, which I feel mm. very strongly about. Mm. Sir, the Agni Veers, or for that matter, anyone who gets mm. disabled in the service of the nation mm. is entitled to disability pension. Right. Sir, a private, private sector employee also gets benefit. Every mm. government servant is, is covered under uh, the Persons with Disability Act and gets shelter employment. Just to explain, sir, if I'm a typist, in the Indian mm. Railways and I lose right. my hands in an accident irrespective of the connection with service. If I just mm-hmm. lose my hands, now obviously I can no longer type. The Railways will have to keep me employed till my date of superannuation and pay my full salary and keep me in a job which I could do with my disability. Now this benefit is available to every government servant. Mm-hmm. Sir, I'll use Hindi. हमारे सिपाहियों ने क्या पाप किया है कि उनको सजा दे रहे हो सबको दे रहे हो उनके साथ ये क्यों सर दे आर द पीपल ऑफ रिस्किंग द लाइफ फॉर यू एंड मी एंड वी वांट टू डिनाइ बेनिफिट्स मिस्टर चतुर्वेदी देयर वाज समथिंग कॉल्ड द इमरजेंसी कमिशनड ऑफिसर्स सो इन अ वे वुड यू एग्री दैट द अग्नि वीर्स आर इमरजेंसी कमिशनड जवान्स सो आई वंडर व्हाट बेनिफिट्स द ईसी ऑफिसर्स गॉट शुड द जवान्स आल्सो गेट द सेम uh definitely sir ec officers mm. uh at the time when the ec took place incidentally sir my father was a ec commission officer okay and uh ec commission officers when they were under training the 1954 circular of disability pension on ex gratia basis existed so okay. case to case basis uh any uh, uh, emergency commission officer being injured in ota was given disability pension or should have been given disability pension. Okay. Uh, now, if I get the current scenario, the mm. SS officer, of course, mm. now the SS has moved 10 years instead of 5, but right. the SS officers are given this monthly ex gratia or it is a disability pension, but you call it ex gratia for whatever reason. But the same benefit mm. 
needs to be replicated there you cannot have a distinction on disability a person who's in the academy is definitely training for war is definitely right. preparing for war so anything Absolutely. happening to him should be considered at par with a peace time injury in any exercise and that should be the same for officers and jawans sure Uh, Mr. Chaturvedi, uh, you are working tirelessly for uh, the benefit of the disabled uh, officers and jawans. I wish to compliment you for the work that you're doing. Thank you very much for sparing time and speaking to us. Thank you very much, sir. It was a pleasure. Thank you for touching this important issue. Jai Hind. Thank you. Jai Hind.